Hello and welcome to Building on Cardano videos, where we interview projects and people who are building inside of our ecosystem. Today we have Josh Stone. He's a co-founder and CEO of Book.io. That is an NFT marketplace for buying, reading and selling ebooks and audiobooks. Today we're going to talk about their e-reader, that is ADAP, and their NFT marketplace. So Josh, welcome to Building on Cardano. Thanks, thanks, Anita. Appreciate you having me on. Please tell us more about yourself and about Book.io. Myself and the team, we actually had built an ebook platform back starting in 2010 and then built that up and sort of supplied the industry with some, some interesting capabilities and ended up selling that to our Series A investors and uh, took some time off, got really interested in you know all things blockchain. And then came back and decided that we wanted to to launch a a Web three based ebook and audiobook solution. So we kicked that off. Actually, we formed the company back in 2020, but then we didn't really get started on things until the beginning of 2022. And then we officially launched the platform at the end of July this year, 2022. Amazing! Can you tell us why you choose Cardano for launching your ebook platform? So with ebooks in particular at mass scale, our goal really is to uh, to deliver books at mass scale. So if you look at the entire ebook market, there's a little over a billion people each year that buy ebooks and audiobooks. And so we needed something that would scale up to a mass consumer base that had really low transaction fees. Because when you get to that really large trade size, a lot of those books are priced at around $10 or less. So at the time, it, you know, it, it didn't make sense at all to even consider like a proof of work network because the fees would potentially exceed the cost of the, of the goods sold. So we needed something that could transact very quickly and um, keep the fees very low for the end users. So uh, we've been fans of, of Cardano for a long time. I think I got involved back maybe end of 2017, beginning 2018, somewhere in there, got really interested in it and, and what Charles was doing. And so, yeah, we went, we went forward with that because we had a lot of background in Haskell as well. That sounds really interesting. And I'm sure that our listeners are also interested into hearing more about uh, how assets are protected, shared and used on your platform. We're not necessarily an, an ebook project. We consider ourselves an ebook platform and we want to empower authors and creators to come and, and utilize our platform to create content. So the way our NFTs work are really in combination with uh, decentralized storage and just blockchain kind of in general web three. So the way that we approach it as, you know, the NFT itself is really just the key and the representation of that ownership. The entire ebook itself, all of the components of it and everything that comprise it and the, the encryption key for it are, are all decentralized and stored through IPFS. So when you have one of our NFTs, then we have an, an e-reader DAP that you can connect your wallet to and then you can pull in your books and you can see your books and, and read those. Uh, when you're done reading, you can give it to a friend or you can sell it on like JPEG store or or some other marketplace. So the, the book itself is completely decentralized. We call them decentralized encrypted assets. So we use NFTs and blockchain and decentralized storage, but we, you know, an NFT is a component of, of that process. What is the librarian? We would like to know more about this feature. So we sort of have a, you know, a, a path towards complete decentralization, just like Cardano, to get to a point where it's completely community governed from that technical aspect. So our roadmap really was to deploy the decentralized encrypted assets, the actual books themselves first, which once you, know, you own, nobody can take it away. The second portion of that is to completely decentralize the reader itself and to expand that out so that any other um, wallet or marketplace or any other e-reader for that matter could in ingest an SDK and allow people to read so that we don't control the reading experience in any way as well. So the librarian basically serves as that function that finds the encryption key on IPFS, decrypts that so that the book can be unlocked. Originally thought it would take much longer to, to get to that, but we've made some significant progress already and some interesting things that we're doing that I think we're going to, hopefully in 2023, we're going to have all the platform completely, the, the reading portion of it as well, completely decentralized as well as the, the book. So super excited about that. And uh, what have you released recently? We're just at about 30 titles that we've released. Originally, we were releasing some public domain type books just as tests really to show publishers and authors that we've worked with in the past. Then we we got a ton of incoming authors who were interested in releasing as well, a lot faster than what we had originally anticipated. 
And so we've released some interesting titles from some New York Times bestsellers, some horror stuff, some romance things, adventure stuff, partnered with some other projects in Cardano and released content for them as well. So we're we are about 30 titles right now. We anticipate, you know, literally thousands and millions more titles, right? There's there's over 20 million something book titles. So our goal is, you know, we want to decentralize all that knowledge, right? So that knowledge is what we really think, moving that out of the hands of any central authority so that the people control the knowledge. Uh, when it comes to next milestone of book IO team, can you share a little bit more about that? So our next big milestone, actually, we're releasing both our iOS and Android native uh, reading apps. Right now, it's just an HTML5 based DAP reader. So the the mobile component, I think, will really help on the just the consumption side in general, right? And so that we have the collectability aspect because books are numbered and there's rarity built into those, but really creating a true platform for readers. And how can community get involved with this project? Yeah, the community has been great. They could connect with us on uh, on Twitter, of course, or, or Discord. And really, uh, there's certain books and series that sort of stack up, right? So you can own a couple of particular titles from an author and maybe you get another one and you can connect directly with those authors as, as well through our Discord. So we're wanting to, to sort of create a jumping off place, not just so that we interact with the community, but really we're connecting authors and content creators with the communities that want to support them as well. Thank you, Josh. And if you want to find out more about book.io, you can find the link below. Yeah, thanks, Anita. Appreciate it. Our next guest is Alien Magazine, who is a co-founder and CEO of Martify Labs. This is a company that is providing blockchain services on Plutus and Cardano. And today we're going to talk about Mesh, their recently launched uh, open source SDK tool. And that is an open source library providing numerous tools to build powerful dApps on Cardano. Alan, welcome to Building on Cardano. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be here. The first question that we have is to tell us more about yourself and why you choose Cardano. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is uh, Alan. I'm based in Paris. I've been around Cardano for a few years now. Really got interested by it when seeing all the promises and also accomplished work that Cardano has made over the last few years. The ideas of decentralization, security, and scientific approach of development. So um, when the first Plutus Pioneer program came around, I decided to enroll. And from there, I started my development journey on Cardano with a background in functional programming. There I met my today's co-workers, Belkarim and Jingles, and uh, we started to actively develop on Cardano since then, providing the community with uh, tools and open source services. As I understand, uh, Mesh has components such as uh, React, uh, Chainable Transaction Builder, and the Starter Kit. So you can basically choose uh, your own language or a framework. So what have you released recently? Yeah, so as you said, Mesh comes with a lot of things and a lot of assets. Uh, the first thing that we released was the core Mesh SDK, providing the community with a library that handles transaction building and wallet connections. On top of that, we added uh, recently React components, reducing the amount of code needed to add a wallet connection, for example, to your website. And finally, around the end of November, we released the starter kits that allow businesses and users to launch a Web3 application on Cardano in just a matter of seconds, including various templates for the most common use cases on Cardano, uh, ranging from the very basic uh, blank Web3 application to a more complex multi-segmenting uh, website or an NFT marketplace. Tell us a little bit more about how users interact uh, with each feature. In terms of features, uh, I will go through an example of the starter kits uh, because that will allow me to describe uh, a lot of things that Mesh actually provides. So to start off, we are going to install the starter kit with one single uh, command line uh, command. And, um, and uh, from there, uh, the installation taking just a couple of seconds will uh, launch a, um, uh, a website ready to be used uh, and to be customized by businesses. So here in this example, we are doing a multi-sig minting website. So it's a new technology of minting that allows um, big mints to happen without any congestion. Um, as you can see, the connect wallet button is also one of the features of, uh, of our React components. 
uh, that you can integrate in your website in just a couple of uh, a couple of lines of code. Uh, from there, uh, we are able to mint a test token and um, for an amount of uh, by default 10 ADA that you can customize obviously in the folders and files of the project. Uh, to know to learn more about what you can do with Mesh, uh, you can go to the playground of Mesh and uh, look around and test the functions that you are that are displayed because the playground also acts as a live demo of all the functionalities of Mesh. Our listeners will uh, love to hear a little bit more about the team behind the projects. Can you tell us that? The core team behind Notify and Mesh uh, is composed of three persons. Jingles from Singapore. He is the uh, lead uh, product developer, also roadmap and uh, web developer. Uh, also, we have Abdel Karim from Algeria. He is the lead uh, full stack developer. And there is uh, me, Alan from Paris. I uh, lead the Plutus development side of things and the architecture of smart contracts needed by Mesh. We all came together because we are all passionate developers. Uh, we all think Cardano has great potential. We want to contribute to it. And uh, that led to us collaborate with other like-minded individuals in this space, such as the team from Gimbal Labs, TX Pipe, and Harmonic Labs. Together with them, we are building a suite of tools that will hopefully benefit greatly the Cardano community. And what is the next milestone for Mesh SDK? So in the short term, we want to release uh, the Marketplace Starter Kit for Mesh, allowing businesses to launch an NFT marketplace in just a couple of seconds increasing the decentralization of that NFT trading ecosystem, as well as providing a great tool for businesses or NFT projects. In the longer term, we also uh, want to provide a starter kit for stake pool operators, allowing them to create a new stake pool in just a couple of seconds, as well as to have a site for their stake pool where users can just click on a button to delegate to their stake pool. In parallel, we also want to build our educational side of the business, uh, meaning that we want to provide courses, more guides, more tutorials in various forms, uh, YouTube videos or Udemy courses, as well as partnering with educational focused uh, companies like Murgo Academy or Gimbal Labs to provide as much educational content as possible for the Cardano community. And considering it is an open source project, uh, how can community get involved with it? So there are two main ways that the community can contribute to, to Mesh. The first one is to actually use the product, test it out uh, either for personal users or a company use, because that way we find bugs, we find potential improvements, and this feedback is really useful for us. The second way is people that actually want to participate actively in the development of Mesh. They can get in touch with us or their company can get in touch with us to build more tools, more guides for the community. Uh, so if you want to participate in a great Web3 development campaign, you can join us uh, at uh, Motify. Thank you, Alan. It was really nice having you on today's show. Thanks for having me. And if you want to learn more about some of the many projects building on Cardano, be sure to sign up for our new Ancestral Cardano Guide to the Ecosystem, which will be about 65 pages of featuring over 140 projects and Cardano creators. You will find the link below. Thank you for watching Building on Cardano.